Sometimes psychology experiments go very, very wrong. Sometimes this leads to really interesting contributions to science. And sometimes this also leads to terrible after-effects and a revision of research ethics. Here are five of the strangest psychological experiments that have been conducted. In 1969, scientists really wanted to know if there was a link between drug abuse and psychological dependence. A well-known fact nowadays, this was yet to be researched in a controlled setting back then. Since it would be unethical to use human patients, the researchers went down our evolutionary tree and picked monkeys as the subjects. Next, they injected these monkeys with cocaine, morphine, LSD, and alcohol. Then they simply left the monkeys in a room with large amounts of these drugs. The hypothesis was that the monkeys would self-administer the drugs due to a psychological dependence, which did happen. But how it happened was pretty awful. The monkeys reportedly suffered convulsions, broke their own arms, and tore off their fingers due to hallucinations. Yes, the scientists did confirm their hypothesis, but also a lot of monkeys died. Today's video is sponsored by Blinkist. I really like to start books. I enjoy going to bookstores and skimming through all of the different novels and magazines with the romantic idea that I'll be able to finish all of these books if I was to purchase them. More often than not, however, I'm left with a stack of unfinished books all over my apartment. That is until I found Blinkist, which condenses entire books and, more importantly, powerful ideas into just 15 minutes of the most important highlights. Blinkist lets you save time, money, and helps you discover and understand the world around you faster than ever. Blinkist has over 3,000 nonfiction books, 14 million active users, and lets you access all of your titles well offline. Now there's Blinkist Connect, which allows all premium users to share their accounts with another person of their choice. I'm a huge fan of David Attenborough, so right now I'm listening to his A Life on Our Planet, a beautifully written account of his experience exploring the wonders of the natural world. Attenborough does a great job of warning us about the dangers we pose to such a world if we continue on the path we're on. Click on the link below and the first 100 people will get unlimited access for one week to try it out. This is a 7 day trial that is completely free and that you can cancel at any time. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. It's tricky being a high school teacher. How do you get the material to stick to your students' minds? How could you, for example, illustrate the social conditions leading up to the Holocaust? Well, if it's 1967 and your high school teacher, Ron Jones, you would probably decide to create an authoritarian dictatorship within your high school. On the first day, Mr. Jones wrote, Strength through discipline on the chalkboard. Quickly, he commanded a dictatorial atmosphere in his classroom. Students willingly kicked out non-members of the class and pledged their loyalty to Mr. Jones. Soon this movement spread across the school, becoming an entire club. This club was formed around Jones's ideology, called the Third Wave, that aimed to eliminate democracy. Pretty soon bodyguard divisions formed that attacked school reporters and dissenting students. The kids saluted Jones and created their own insignia. When the experiment went too far, which took only four days, Jones held a school-wide assembly to reveal that his students had fallen under the same conditions as the Germans in World War II, following a charismatic leader through tribalism and ignorance. Henry Murray was a big name in psychology. He was heavily involved in the military, specifically researching the effects of stress on individuals. His main theory, personology, underscored the importance of stress and tension in developing the human personality. From this, he sought to study extreme stress and its effects on personal values and beliefs. Using Harvard undergraduates, he had them submit a deeply personal essay that summarized everything they believed in. 
Then, without their knowledge, he had law students systematically destroy all of their arguments in a dark room. Afterwards, he had the students watch footage of them being humiliated. Many participants reported feelings of extreme distress and felt that the study verged on the unethical. Most interesting of all is the story of one subject, 17-year-old math student named Ted, who was labeled as lawful going into the study. After the study, he would become the infamous Unabomber, killing several people with bombs. Ted's hatred of society and institutions could be attributed to Murray's study, although Kaczynski himself denies this. In 1967, a doctor severely messed up circumcising a young boy named David Reimer. Unfortunately, a John Hopkins professor named John Money learned about this accident. Dr. Money sought to prove his theory of gender neutrality and argued that gender was entirely socially learned. He convinced David's parents to allow David to undergo various surgeries and change his name to Brenda. Over the course of a few years, John Money would report that female gender development had in fact occurred, using several inappropriate measures to encourage this development. However, at 14 years old, Reimer was in extreme psychological agony and pleaded to have surgical procedures that would revert him back to being a boy. He disclosed that he never had identified as a girl and went through serious bullying as a child. Sadly, both he and his brother, another patient of John Money, took their lives. The parents attribute Money's intervention to their son's deaths. Beginning in 1953 and continuing for 20 years, the US government decided to explore the limits of the human mind. This was less for curiosity or scientific inquiry, and more for the potential advancement of brainwashing techniques and torture. They would find mental health patients, prisoners, drug addicts, and street workers, basically anyone who can't fight back, or who people wouldn't believe and took them to disclosed locations. Without any informed consent, the subjects were administered LSD, underwent sensory deprivation or hypnosis, and were regularly abused by unsupervised researchers. At one point, the CIA even set up several brothels to obtain men who would be too embarrassed to recount what happened to them once inside. However, due to the panic of Watergate, the CIA was ordered to destroy all of their files on what would be called MKUltra. Thus, the scope of the experiment is mostly unknown, and the many who had suffered due to the experiments are still left with trauma and a sense of injustice. 